So on the left, you have a 4G phone and on the right, you have a 4G plus phone. Oh my God. Whoa, that's like 50 Mbps right on the 4G plus. So from smartphone manufacturers to Airtel to Geo, everyone is going crazy on 5G. But we all forget the most important network factor right now, 4G plus or LTE plus icon you see on top of your smartphone, also known as carrier aggregation. So what is carrier aggregation? Does your mobile have carrier aggregation and how good is it? Well, this is Bhatik, you are already watching TechWiser and after watching this video, you will have a clear understanding of what is 4G plus or carrier aggregation, how to know if a smartphone has carrier aggregation. Well, let's go. Now, in order to understand how good carrier aggregation your phone has, we need to first understand what basically is carrier aggregation. Like, what is carrier aggregation? Carrier aggregation sounds like a fancy name, but let me give you a very simple example. Say, if you want to drink water from a bottle, you put a straw and drink it. That's one carrier. Now, if you want to drink more water, let's use two straws or three straws or even four straws. That's carrier aggregation for you. In simple words, carrier aggregation is very basically the use of multiple carriers, straws or frequencies at once for better internet access. Now that we understand 4G carrier aggregation, the next question is, how do you know if this phone has good carrier aggregation or this phone or this phone or... Okay, I need to stop. Well, to understand that, you need to understand types of carrier aggregation. Now, carrier aggregation are of mainly two types interband and intraband but that's not important for this context what's important is 2ca 3ca etc now similar to 5g 4g also has bands like for example band 3 band 3 operates somewhere between 1700 to 1900 megahertz so there are multiple frequencies or straws within the same band band 3 and similarly you have band 5 band 40 all of that so if you combine two straws or two carriers it's 2ca if you combine three straws of frequencies, 3CA, 4 for 4CA and maximum it can go 5 for 5CA. In India, as of now, there's no 5CA because network providers haven't implemented that far yet. So this 2CA, 3CA, 4CA, how is this important? Well, it depends on three factors. Number one, the phone needs to support carrier aggregation. Your SIM card provider needs to support carrier aggregation and third, the place where you are living needs to have carrier supported bands. Only when these three conditions are met, you will get carrier aggregation. Here, let me show you with a really good example. This is OnePlus 60. I have GeoSIM in here and you can see I have installed the NetMonster app and it shows 4CA. It's using four carriers for carrier aggregation. Then again, let me put the same in Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And as you can see, it has 4CA, but it keeps on switching between four carriers and three carriers. Now I put the same SIM in POCO X3 Pro, you see, waiting, still waiting, waiting, it keeps on changing, there's no carrier aggregation on Geo. So what's happening here? Well, the first and second condition of CA are met, all phones support CA and my Geo SIM supports CA too. So we can get CA in OnePlus 60 and Galaxy Note 9 easily. And it's not like POCO X3 Pro doesn't support carrier aggregation, it does but it does not support as many bands as Galaxy Note 9 or OnePlus 60. And I purposely picked up old flagship phones to show you the difference. Now let's move to a place where POCO X3 Pro supports carrier aggregation. Now in this room, we do get carrier aggregation on POCO X3 Pro. It's 2CA, while in the other room, we didn't. And again, I'm pointing out the POCO X3 Pro can only use two bands. So it's only 2CA, whereas both OnePlus 60 and Galaxy Note 9 supports CA in four bands, so you get 4CA. And this 4CA and 2CA does make a difference in speed test. As you can see, there's almost half the internet speed on POCO X3 Pro compared to the other two phones. Now, how does this speed difference affect practically? See, I tried to download Subway Surfer game from the Google Play Store on all the three phones at the same time. As you can see, right out of the bat, both our Note 9 and OnePlus 60 is way ahead. And the POCO X3 Pro just seems to be crawling now. Internet is really bad in the evening on Geo. <sighs> right here, 
The POCO X3 Pro is at 50% and both Galaxy Note 9 and OnePlus 60 have completed downloading Subway Surfer. That's what 4CA does. CA in more bands gives you almost two times the speed that you get on a budget or mid-range phone. So how do you figure out if your phone has 4CA or good carrier aggregation? How to find if your phone supports carrier aggregation in the first place? Short answer, it's really difficult. Most of the modems in your hardware support 4CA but it's logged in software or it is not supported by your network operator like Geo, Airtel or Vodafone if anyone still exists. Vodafone. Like for example, let's pick the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max. Xiaomi's official site says it supports carrier aggregation in Band 3, Band 40, Band 41. Same, Poco X3 Pro supports carrier aggregation in Band 3, Band 40 and Band 41. And if you check for iQ7, OnePlus 9 or Xiaomi's own Mi 11 Lite, it's not mentioned. So the only way to find out is watch reviews, subscribe to TechWiser, stay wiser. Now, if you have the phone, it's pretty easy. You can always install the NetMonster app to check what band your phone uses. Finally, here's the bigger picture. If someone tells you in the review they don't get 4G carrier aggregation, it's not that simple. Carrier aggregation depends on three things. First, the phone itself, what carrier aggregation band your phone supports. Second, the location. You don't get carrier aggregation for all bands at all locations. Third, your network provider. Geo provides carrier aggregation on all their 4G bands, whereas Airtel provides it only on band 3 and band 40 as of now. And the bigger question, why did I say 4G plus is more important than 5G? Listen carefully, 5G is an add-on to 4G. It uses the same base technology as 4G, but that was not the case with 4G and 3G. When we upgraded from 3G to 4G, network operators had to release 3G bands to get 4G on them. Hence, 3G and 3G phones became less common and obsolete. But in 5G, there is a concept called Dynamic Spectrum Sharing or DSS. This enables network operators to use the same band with 4G or 5G the way they want. So to simplify, the more 5G bands the network operators buy, you will get better 4G plus as well. 4G and 5G can coexist because of Dynamic Spectrum Sharing or DSS. So this was the video, hope things are clear. And if it is, like the video, subscribe to TechWiser. This is Pratik, see you soon.